In this video, I'm going to explain fill rate metrics and a related metric called OTIF, or on time, in full. These metrics can be used to measure the level of customer satisfaction from an order fulfillment point of view. There are multiple ways to calculate these metrics depending on which point of view you're trying to measure and the level at which data is stored in your computer system. I'll explain what this means along the way. Fill rate is a metric which calculates the percentage of customer orders that a company successfully ships. For example, suppose you have 10 customers and they each order 5 bottles of hand lotion from your website. You happen to have 57 bottles of this particular hand lotion in stock and you ship 5 of them to each of these 10 customers. The order fill rate is 10 orders shipped complete divided by a total of 10 orders, or 100%. Now suppose customer number 11 comes along and orders 9 bottles of this lotion. You have 7 left in stock after fulfilling the orders of the first 10 customers. You ship those 7 to customer number 11, and the remaining 2 bottles are placed on the back order list to show that you still owe that customer 2 bottles of lotion in order to complete their order. The order fill rate is now 10 orders shipped complete divided by a total of 11 orders or 90.9%. A fill rate is measured over a specified period of time. For example, a company may choose to calculate its fill rate monthly, quarterly, or yearly. With data being so readily available, I've also monitored fill rates on a daily basis. This is possible as long as your data set doesn't become so large that it slows down the tool you use to view the metric. For the dashboard on the screen, I have daily fill rates showing in the larger charts and I have year-to-date fill rate summaries in the dials on the right. You may notice that I have two different fill rate definitions showing on the screen. This company sells its products in both single units and cases. For the order fill rate shown in gray, whether the customer ordered one unit or one case, their order counts as one data point in calculating the fill rate. Suppose customer A orders one bottle of shampoo and customer B orders a case of 12 bottles of shampoo. Each of these customers counts as one order and we calculate the fill rate as we did previously, i.e. the fill rate is the number of orders shipped complete divided by the total number of orders. The red chart is showing a volume fill rate. For this fill rate, it matters whether the customer ordered a single unit or a case. Suppose again, customer A orders one bottle of shampoo and customer B orders a case of 12 bottles of shampoo. You happen to have six bottles in stock. You send a bottle to customer A and you choose to ship nothing to customer B until you have a full case ready to ship. In total, you shipped one unit out of a total of 13 units requested. The volume fill rate in this case is volume shipped complete divided by the total ordered volume, which is 1 divided by 13, or 7.7%. For customer B, if you decided to send them the remaining five bottles you had in stock, instead of waiting for a full case to be available, your volume fill rate would be 6 units shipped divided by 13 units requested, or 46.2%. You may be wondering which fill rate to measure and why I have measured both for this company. The order fill rate is really a measure of the percentage of customers you please over time, so it's a metric from a customer point of view. The volume fill rate is really a measurement of how close you came to shipping complete orders. It's sometimes easier to interpret this metric by looking at how far from perfect you were. Did you miss filling the order by a few units or several cases? This metric is useful from an internal inventory planning point of view. How well did you match your in-stock inventory to customer demand? Let's take a closer look at the charts on the screen and see what they tell us about this company. Year to date, this company has a fill rate of about 
They disappoint customers approximately 8% of the time. The dark line at 98% is the goal they would like to reach this year. Their volume fill rate is substantially lower. This indicates that they do have orders where they missed filling the entire volume by cases rather than single units. This provides an indication that there is room for improvement in planning for customer demand. If we look at the daily order fill rate chart shown in gray, we can see a few days in September where the company filled only 40% of orders. The next few months show higher fill rates, mostly in the range of 75 to 100%. This indicates that up to 25% of customer orders weren't shipped in full. For additional information, let's look at the daily volume fill rate, shown in red. This chart shows a more widely fluctuating fill rate, which provides an indication of how far off the inventory was during this time period. The larger the drop, the more we know that the order shipments were off by cases rather than single units. This company is located in the USA, and most of the volatility in this metric aligns with the peak retail season, including American Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's retail sales. I mentioned that this company has a target fill rate of 98%. You may wonder why they don't aim for perfection or 100% for their fill rate. 100% is great for customer satisfaction, but it is usually indicative of having surplus inventory. If you've watched my other videos, you may recall me saying that inventory is cash tied up that a company can't use for something else. The inventory goal of a company is to have enough of the right items in stock to meet customer demand while minimizing the amount of money tied up in inventory. That means that a lot of surplus inventory would hinder a company's cash flow. On average, companies have a fill rate in the range of 85 to 95%. Top performing companies manage 98 to 99%. Of course, the more items and variants of those items that you offer, the harder it is to stock the right amounts of everything. The final comment I'll make about fill rates is that sometimes performing this calculation at the order level is impractical depending on how order data is stored. For example, if your data system doesn't allow you to easily consolidate measurements of all line items together, you can calculate order fill rate at the line item level. In this case, the fill rate is really measuring the percentage of line items shipped in full. When orders tend to combine a variety of product units of measure, the line item approach can be an alternative approach for the fill rate calculation. Which calculation level you use for fill rate is less important than monitoring the changes of this metric over time and determining the root cause of decreases in your fill rate. In an effort to get to the root cause of fill rate issues, further segmentation of this metric is very useful. For example, you can segment your fill rates by customer to see if certain customers are being repeatedly disappointed. You can segment your fill rate by sales channel to see if one channel is causing most of your issues. You can segment your fill rate by product to see if a certain product or product line is your main issue. The last metric I'll discuss is OTIF, or on time in full. This metric measures the ability to deliver the expected product to the customer, meaning the right product, deliver the quantity ordered, deliver to the customer's desired location, and to deliver it by the customer's expected date. While the fill rate measures the ability to fill orders, this metric includes additional factors, which include order accuracy and timing. While filling a customer order, it is possible to send an order in full, but you may have sent it several days late or shipped the wrong product. The OTIF takes additional customer satisfaction factors into account. The supply chain industry has not settled on an exact formula for the OTIF, but in general, the formula is the number of deliveries made on time and complete 
divided by the total number of deliveries. In many cases, such as the company data that I have on the screen, the company doesn't operate based on delivery dates, but rather on shipping dates. In this case, we base our OTIF metric on the customer's desired ship date, and we compare that to the order's actual ship date. Another practical consideration is that a customer may order several different items and want them shipped on different dates. In this case, the entire order doesn't have the same dates associated with it. Like the fill rate, it is often more practical to calculate the OTIF at the line item level rather than the order level. Also like many metrics, it's often more useful to see how a metric trends over time to see if business operations are improving or declining rather than focusing on the specific value of the metric. This is one of the reasons that I create both daily charts and the year-to-date views of fill rates and the OTIF metric. The values you choose for your target levels will depend on your product offerings and the current performance levels of your business operations. Fill rates and OTIF metrics can tell you a great deal about the performance of business operations. While viewed as inventory metrics, their application extends beyond inventory into the areas of customer satisfaction and production. Skillful segmentation of these metrics can provide valuable insights into operational issues and can be beneficial in determining the root cause of performance issues. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to press like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive a message when new videos are released. You can also explore the other videos in this series or visit our website for more information on how to use data analysis to improve your business.